Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel here, and today we're going to be discussing how to set your 3406 or C15 camshaft backlash. So in my previous video, we discussed how to install the cam gear, and then the more technical portion, which is setting the backlash correctly. I've seen very many mechanics, even senior mechanics, mess this up, and there's a couple tricks that make it a lot easier than doing it some other ways, I'll just say that. So this is the way I do it. I haven't run into a problem doing it this way yet, and it's one of the three ways Cat recommends doing it. Okay, so on to the video. So there are three Cat-approved ways to check your cam gear backlash. There's actually four ways to check it. I used to know a guy that would rock the idler gear back and forth and listen to see how much it moved, and at that point he would just say it was good or not. However, that's not very technical. So the first way would be use this special tool here and slide it over the cam gear and the idler gear hub. Uh, I've seen people use this and they still get a timing code or something. The other way is to use a dial indicator group. That's really hard to set up and takes a lot of room in the front of the engine. The way I'm going to show you the third way, I've had really good success with it and it doesn't really take any special tooling outside of two feeler gauges. So what you'll need is a 14 thousandths and a 24 thousandths feeler gauge. And these are not special feeler gauges, I've just cut them. You're gonna have to cut a small portion off because the full width of a feeler gauge isn't going to fit between the cam gear and the idler gear. And if you're, say you just did a head and you just put the cam gear back on, I will just check it and if the backlash is okay, I won't worry about pulling the idler gear off. So here's basically what I'm doing. I'm finding the two teeth that are closest together between the cam gear and the idler gear and seeing if the 14 thousandths feeler gauge fits in. It should be kind of snug, kind of like when you're doing an overhead. So just from the other side. And then I check my 24 thousandths. And if it doesn't fit, you basically know your backlash is right. But you can't just check it right away. You need to remove the preload off the gear. So what you have to do is, you can see here, I have someone rotating the engine backwards so what you're going to do is rotate your cam about 30 degrees backwards so you can see the alignment white line on one of the teeth and then you're going to move it forward to the pinpoint on the engine so once it pins and hopefully the cam gear is still timed to the front structure so it will pin right here it's pinned you're going to move it back just a little bit so you're going to go reverse engine rotation just a little bit to remove the preload off the gears now this is the point where you can check your backlash. And if your backlash is fine at 14 thousandths, you should be good to go. So if you're lucky and you have the 14 thousandths, you are ready to reinstall your peanut cover and your engine should run fine. However, there are two other options. So let's say your backlash was not at 14 thousandths, it was either way too loose or way too tight. At this point, you'll need to remove the idler gear. Or if you install everything and then you get an interference code of camshaft to crankshaft timing, not aligned. You'll also need to remove the peanut cover and remove your idler gear. And the idler gear is very easy to remove. Once the peanut cover's off, you just take out the three bolts that hold it in place and the little plate that holds it in place and set those aside. So after you've removed those, you can easily or it should be easily especially if there's no uh, preload on the gears to slide the the uh, timing gear off so once it's slid off you will have access to the timing gear stub and this is where the backlash setting comes in and instead of playing with it 50 times there's an easy trick so what you'll want to find is the small alignment hole right there that has no bolt in it. And what that is, is that's, an, that's a factory alignment hole. You're going to need a 3 8 bolt, and then you're going to want to loosen all of the retaining bolts for this hub. And you can see they're slotted, so it's meant to slide back and forth. So loosen them, and then take your 3 8 bolt and put it in that hole. And once it's in the hole, as you can see now, and the slots are shortened because the hub has moved over a little bit. You should be timed properly. At this point, you want to torque all of the retaining bolts to about 35 foot-pounds. They're 3 8 bolts. 
And then you're going to want to install your idler gear again. Now, you don't need to put the idler gear faceplate and three retaining bolts on yet because just in case it's the backlash is not correct, you have to remove it again and then play with the backlash just a little bit. So at this point, you'll install your idler gear again. It should slide in place. If it doesn't and the cam gear is aligned properly, you probably have an issue. But it should slide in place. So there you go. It should have a little bit of free play. At this point, you can try your feeler gauge trick. And if it's at 14 thousandths and the 24 thousandths doesn't fit, go ahead and install your retaining plate for it. Now at this point, I like to rotate the engine around two rotations. So one cam gear rotation. And what this is checking for is that the cam gear is timed properly when it pins. So as long as your cam gear is timed properly and your backlash is correct, you should be good to go.